Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you the new and very cool UI target tracker for all radar builders. Now the UI target tracker allows you to easily and quickly create UI target indicators over any object that your radar is tracking. And the UI target tracker is free on the Unity Asset Store and all the source code is included. It only requires that you have any radar builder version 2018.2 or higher. All right, so what you're looking at right now in the current scene are some of the objects that we're actually tracking with the UI target tracker. So I'm just gonna quickly pause this scene and I'll just talk about what you're looking at here. So for this scene, actually, it's a scene that you can find in any 3D radar builder or pro radar builder. Uh, if you have the 2D radar builder, you can still have uh, your target, target tracker work, of course but we're just showing you with this particular scene. All right, so in our radar builder here, in our radar builder system, we, we're tracking four different types of objects and they are enemies, friendlies, planets, and stars. Now in our radar here, we're actually rendering out some uh, prefab blips, uh, mesh center blip, and sprite blips with height tracking and base trackers on them. In our UI target tracker, we're reading the data from our radar and generating our indicators over the objects that we're tracking. Now, it's actually quite easy to use because the only thing that you need to do is literally just select your uh, radar, click a button, and just design it however you want by uh, selecting the sprite you want you to represent the thing that you want the indicator to be over and the material for it, the text, or whether or not you want it to show distance. Now, as you can see here, we're tracking some enemy objects here. We have the indicators of some enemy objects. And we're also showing the enemy objects distance. Now, the distance is optional. We can just open out this enemies uh, fold out here. And if we scroll down, we see enemy text, uh, enemy sprite, and enemy distance text. If we turn off enemy distance text, then we only see the name and the indicator over the enemies. Now we can also use another function here called the lock on. So if we turn this on, what that means is now our indicators are gone. And the only way that we're going to be able to show those indicators again is if we lock on to an object. And we can do that by just putting the mouse cursor over an object. But that's not the only way that we can do lock-ons. I'm just going to pause the scene really quickly. If we look over here to the lock-on manager, we are using the mouse over function. So that means that we're going to have to put our mouse over the object to lock onto it. However, we can use a, another function called function trigger, which requires that you call, that you assign to the UI target tracker a object to track and it's quite simple i will probably a little bit later on in the video show you uh, a little short example of this but right now i'm just gonna quickly just look through the rest of the functions inside of the ui target tracker editor and then i'll recreate the entire uh, ui target tracker again for you just to show you how easy it is to set up all right so we can also scale by distance. So we're again, we're focusing on this uh, enemy here. I'm just turn off, use lock on and, and run the scene. All right, there we go. Now we are using scale by distance, which means that the further away the object is, the smaller the display is, the smaller the indicators are. I'm gonna turn back on the distance there. All right. So we could use a static value for scale, which would mean that all the objects would have the same scale value. And we're using an optimization method for the UI target tracker called single. Now, what this means is that the values that you set inside of the editor don't get updated at runtime. Instead, what happens is that it just gets set once and that's it. If we use constant, what happens is that the values are constantly updated. So when you change your 
values it changes at runtime also. All right, so we're going to set this back to single. Oh, I should actually set it back to constant and just quickly show you uh, another value change here. So we can just change even the color of our indicators at runtime. So if you want to change your indicators at runtime, you can it's uh, quite easy. All right, so I'm just going to pause this again and then let's see what else we haven't covered. Ah, text. So text is really the same way. So by default, we give you a, a font, a font size and a color which is uh, what you see here. But again, you can change these values if you want. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just quickly recreate this UI target tracker for you. So first, let me just uh, save this scene since I'm gonna be removing this. And if anything that I said earlier was a little bit confusing, it's all going to be explained when we're uh, recreating the system. All right, so we're going to select our radar. And I'm going to remove the UI target tracker. And I'm going to remove the lock on manager. And let me just clear this out. It's kind of distracting. I don't know what that is. All right. Um, all right, so here we go. So let's also close our UI target tracker editor. So we only have our radar builder open. All right, so I'm just gonna go to tools, Diamango, and then UI target tracker. And that opens up our uh, UI target tracker editor window. And then we're simply going to ensure that we're selecting our radar because we have to have it selected when we're doing this. Then we're going to click add to selected and it's going to add a new ui target tracker and a lock on manager to the object that has the reader on it all right so just like that we just added the uh, ui target tracker and the lock on manager to it now all we need to do is just turn on these uh, values here so just hit the power button to turn these on and you can notice it looks very similar to the radar builder so we're just going to turn these on to let the ui target tracker know that we indeed want to have these objects represented in the scene all right so for the enemy first if we can remember what the uh, uh sprites look like we're just going to go down to sprites and already gives us a default sprite that we can use. I mean, we could very well go ahead and run the scene right now. So I'm just going to run the scene. I haven't made any settings, but I'm just going to run the scene. I'm just going to turn on the use scene scale or not. Just leave it as is and just run the scene. And we'll see what happens. By default, we give you some values. So by running the scene, you should still see all the indicators, but they're all going to look the same. So most of them look the same and you have some missing texture there. So we still need to add some values. So let's go ahead and ensure that we're adding our values. Actually, let's finish the enemy setup here. I'm gonna do one and then I'm just gonna speed through the video for the rest since the setup is gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna do one. So firstly, we want to turn on scale by distance. We want a minimum size of this indicator to be 0 0.4 the maximum size to be 1 <coughs> we want the enemy text to remain as is we're not going to change that um, the sprites we just want to change the color to a something close to red and we want to give it a different sprite something that looks better I'm going to give it this one and then we're going to turn on the enemy display text and that's it now I'm just going to speed through the rest of the video
All right, so that's it. And I'm just going to run the scene here and hopefully all the values I set were fine. All right, and here we go. So we have all of our objects in the scene being tracked and everything looks good. What's that? Friendly. Okay, cool. And the enemy. Let's see if we can find our planet. So if I remember correctly, the planet is... Uh, blue. Oh, there's a planet down there. So there's a planet all the way down there. All right, cool. So everything works. So that's how easy it is to use the UI target tracker. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is the lock on function when using uh, function trigger on the UI target tracker. So let's go ahead and just reselect this UI target tracker here. I'll still all of our settings. Now we're going to switch to using the function trigger and I've exited play mode because I'm going to be showing you how to use a script to trigger a lock on for the uh, lock on manager. And it's quite simple. So when you download the uh, UI target tracker, you get a script called mon uh, monitor character. Now it's just an example script of how to assign a game object to the object to lock on to uh, value for the lock on manager so that the lock on manager knows to lock on to that particular object. We're going to take that script and we're going to assign it to just a single enemy here. We could very well assign it to all the enemies, but we're just going to do one enemy and lock on to that one enemy. So it requires a lock on manager here. Again, just an example script. You can do this however you want. And we're going to turn on the use lock on and just run the scene here. Yep, just run the scene. And then you'll notice that um, nothing's going to happen. We won't see anything locked on yet until we trigger that lock on function. All right, so as you can see here, um, we're in the scene, but we don't know what object we're going to be locked on to yet. So let's find that object in the scene and let's uh, select player aimed at me. This triggers the lock on function. So it assigns this game object to the lock-on manager, and there we go. So it tells the lock-on manager that this enemy needs to be locked onto because we've aimed at it. All right, so now we've locked onto it, and it's actually just quite simple to do. So we've locked onto just one, and right now this example script only allows to lock onto one. However, you can modify the script if you want to handle multiple lock-ons. If we're using the mouse over, that's again, just a single lock on. However, you can uh, modify the script if you want to handle multiple lock ons. All right, so on the ship radar, again, I'm just gonna turn off the function trigger, set back to mouse, actually, I'm gonna just turn off the lock on. So we have all of our objects visible again. So that's how easy it is to use the UI target tracker. Now there are going to be more updates in the future. Uh, some for the interface here, the editor. And some for the functionality of the system itself. But so far everything works pretty good. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.